Alright, so Create 0.5 Full Steam Ahead just came out. Main changes are the display board, steam engines, and of course, trains. There's also a few other changes that we'll also go over. So first off, look at this. I mean, this is so cool. There's so much information that you can read. With the help of display links, you can link a lot of information to the board. So you can get information about entities, about speed, about stress units, even time, and well, just a lot of other things. So let's look at this. How does, you know, how do we, how do we associate something with this board? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click this board. And we're going to go over to this steam engine here. And maybe I want some information about, uh, I want to know about the stress units. So I'm going to go ahead and click it there. And I'll get a message successfully bound to target. I'll right click. So we can choose which info to display. I want to know, I want to know what the total capacity of this is. So I'm going to go ahead and put a label. And this is optional. You can write whatever you want. I'm going to put steam engine. SU total. And I'm going to put it on line 3. So I just scroll to select line 3. And we should see it update any second now. There we go. Ah, so I did not delete the previous link that was connected to the board. So it's fighting. So I'll go ahead and remove it. And when we return to the board, we'll see that they'll stop fighting and it will only display the steam engine stress unit total. Okay, so that's the display board. You can also associate things to Nixie tubes and even sides the same way. So right now they're both connected to the creative motor speed. So they're both 64 RPM. If I go and change the creative motor speed, let's say to 48. Well, look at that, it changes right here. So there's so many things we can do with uh, just displaying information. So it's not only on the display boards, but also Nixie tubes and signs. So that's the first part, the first big part of the things added by this mod. Another cool thing they added are steam whistles. So what is this thing? Well, you have to put it on a steam engine and I'll show you guys how to make a steam engine in just a second. So we have our steam whistle on the steam engine. And when it receives a redstone signal, it makes a sound. So I can also change the pitch by making it longer. So just like a real instrument, you know, you have a longer section, you'll have a lower pitch sound. You can also right click with a wrench. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna change the octave. It's gonna make it thicker. There's three different octaves you can have. So I can go all the way from E, Sorry, I can go all the way from, sorry, it starts off at F sharp, and you can go all the way to F sharp, the next octave. So if I right click, well, it's gonna be lower. So that's the highest sound you can have. And then that's the lowest sound you can have. So it goes from F sharp, there's four F sharps you can have, so there's three full octaves. Let's go see how a steam engine works. How do we make a steam engine, first of all? Okay, so what I have set up here is a just a regular fluid container. So right now it's in uh, a two by two, uh, one tall configuration. I have four campfires under it. You can also put blaze burners, which will heat more and uh, that'll generate more stress units. Um, a steam engine, of course, needs water. So I have a creative tank up here filled with water with a pump going down to it. What I'll do to make it a steam engine is, well, there's an item called a steam engine that I attach to the fluid container. And then I also need a shaft. So what I'll do is I'll attach the shaft here. And you see it kind of connected right here, directly connected to this shaft that was going to my speed controller. So it's, it's, uh, it's like a crankshaft, right? So it's uh, an engine. So what's going on is it's not actually gonna start right away. So you can see size is green, heat is green, but water is red. So why is water red? Well, because it doesn't have enough water, it kind of needs to be started. So what I've done is I've actually connected it to a speed controller to, and I've connected that to the pump, but I need to start it up first. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just start cranking 
just start cranking until eventually the machine will start itself. There we go, now it's self-sustaining. Right, so now the machine is actually pumping water into it. And now it's stopped. Now when did that stop? Ah, that's why, okay. Let's fix that. So it wasn't actually going into the shaft, so we'll just go ahead. So although the steam engine is connected to the pump that's connected to the creative fluid tank, I do have to start off by hand cranking. And I do this just until it gets started. I don't know why that changes direction. That's, that's probably a glitch. So now, okay, it's self It's not self-sustaining yet. Okay, now it's self-sustaining. We have water, so we're making power. So this is right now making 2,048 stress units. And I have one engine. I could connect more. Um, so for now, this is just a simple setup. So steam engines have actually replaced furnace engines. There are no more furnace engines in the game. Those have been completely removed. So now uh, the steam engine is kind of like the late game, super powerful energy source. Um, you can run it with uh, campfires for heat. Um, they need water, but you can also use blaze burners uh, to make it even hotter uh, to have more power. And you can make these a lot larger too. So now let's move on to some of the new features added in 0.5. First off is the frame glass trapdoor. This is just a normal trapdoor made out of frame glass. They've also added frame glass doors, which are interesting because they slide, they're not like other doors. So this could be useful in some sort of, maybe a modern build, patio door, pretty neat. They also added the train door. So the train door works the same way. Um, if you know you're on a train and you want to have a sleeper car, um, you know, this is kind of how they work in trains in real life. So that's a pretty neat addition to have a new type of door. They also added a trap door for the trains as well. Now they've added some new ladders as well. They've added the andesite, the brass, and the copper ladder. So these are, these match the train aesthetic. Um, I've included a regular ladder here to show you how the new ladders are a little bit different, so they kind of go up over the top of where they're connected to. So these are some cool new um, aesthetic features added in 0.5. The next item, so this is the placard. So this is basically, you can think of it as an item frame with two differences. First off, um, they can work on contraptions. So normally item frames, if you put them on a contraption, they'll break. So this is a good way of, you know, you can put things on your contraptions. The second thing is that when you right click on them with the item that matches what's in the placard, they emit a redstone signal. So I'm sure there's uses for this. This is, a, this is the second cool feature of placards. One downside that the placards have is unfortunately, if you put a map on them, well, they don't show the map. They show the item map, but they don't show the contents of the map. But hey, they're a really cool addition, so I'm not complaining. Some of the new items added are rose quartz blocks. So there's a few decorative blocks, but the most important, the most, the most interesting one is the rose quartz lamp. So how does this work? Well, right here I have a rose quartz lamp that's on and it's emitting a redstone signal. Okay, cool. But what's really neat is that if I turn this one on here, well, this other one turns off. So actually what happens is that for all the rose quartz lamps that are on, that are connected. If I turn one on, it'll turn off the others that are on. So that's really a neat feature that I don't think anything like it exists in uh, in Minecraft. So that's uh, that's pretty neat. Um, just one thing is that the rose quartz lamps do have to be connected by other rose quartz lamps. So this one here that's not connected, well, it won't affect or be affected by any of the other lamps. I can also use a wrench to toggle the lamp. So here I can have more than one lamp activated at a time by toggling it with a wrench. Though if I go ahead and turn on another lamp, well they'll all obey the rules and they'll turn off. So there's some other changes uh, in this mod. So first of all, uh, the casing recipes have changed. So they all require deployers. So what you need to do is you have a deployer. Let's say you wanna make a brass casing. Well, you put a piece of brass in the deployer and you put a stripped log, it has to be stripped, onto the depot, and there you have it, you have your, your casing. So now you do need uh, deployers to make the casings. 
Ah, uh, this is another change. So, rest in peace, the encased fan engine. These do not work anymore. Physics have changed. A magma block on your fan no longer produces any stress or rotation. Um, I had a lot of builds, and I'm sure a lot of you do too that use these engines. So, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some revamping of our builds to do. But hey. This is a great update, so I'm not going to complain too much. Rest in peace, the encased fan engine. Okay, so in 0 0.5, they also changed how glue works. So before glue was an entity, it doesn't seem to be an entity anymore. Now how it works is a bit more sophisticated. So right, right now, I have the glue selected in my hotbar. And I'm pointing at this contraption here, and we can see, we can see an outline. So right now, this is showing us that this chassis here is connected to this uh, train casing down here, which means that they're connected. So if I go ahead and I turn this lever on this, sorry, if I turn this crank on the sticky piston, we'll see that they move together. Now let's say I want to connect this piece of cobblestone to the contraption. Well, what I can do is I can right click on the cobblestone and then click on to the casing and that'll connect them. So right now we see everything that's connected. So if I go ahead and turn this crank, well, they'll all move together. If I want to remove the glue connection, all I have to do is select the glue and left click. And now they will no longer be connected. And we can move the contraption independently of the cobblestone. So now let's move on to the main feature, the trains. All right, so now I'm sure it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's get into the trains. So I've made a little train right here, I have a locomotive, and I have a wagon in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how this thing works. I'm going to go sit in the seat, then I'm going to right click the controls. So this is actually going to allow me to move, just like just like walking, W to go forward, S to go backwards. Actually, whatever key binds you have for walking, they'll work for the train. So the cool thing I find is these tracks, you know, they're not just, they're not just bound to the grid, they'll go in any direction. They can turn, they can go up and down. They can uh, They can even do both at the same time. So this is super versatile. So this is, uh, this is a little train, a basic one in action. See, it tells you that you're approaching the station. If I just hold space bar, it'll move me directly there. It'll tell me which station I've arrived at. Similarly, when I leave the station, it says that I'm departing the station. So, I can get off the train, and I can show you guys now how to make your own rails. So, this looks complex, right? I mean, there's turns up and down and everything. It's really pretty simple. So, all you have to do, is, well, you just go ahead and place the rails down like you would any other block. Then you right-click it when it's white like this, and then you choose where your endpoint is. So. You can see right now it's showing an outline of where it can and can't go. I want to bring it up here. You know, I want to have some elevation. And the direction you face does have an impact. So what this is going to do when I right click is that it'll connect the rail to this point right here. You'll notice in my offhand I have a girder. What this will do is that it'll actually place the item that I have in my offhand underneath the rails. So if I right click, it'll place the rails with the girder. So this is an aesthetic choice. You can place rails without having anything underneath them. It just doesn't look as good. That's what I have right here. It still works. Let's say I want to go up here. Well, I can do the same thing. I just right click this track here. And I click here and it'll place the rails. If I want to put another item underneath, I can do that too. So now I have obsidian in my offhand. I just right click the track here. And we can go down and place it here. And you see, it's placed the obsidian underneath. So this is how you place rails. Pretty simple. Now let's make a natural train. So first things first, we need a train station on a natural piece of track. It has to be a straight track aligned with the grid. So we right click the track with our train station and then we place the block. We right click the station and we click create new train. So you'll see there's this blue highlighted area right here. What I do is I right click it with the train casing and that'll create what they call a bogey. 
I can right click it again to change the appearance. So I like these ones, these, these look like good engines, right? They've got the big wheels. And then we can put one or two little carts. The next thing we do is we want to actually build up our train. So we can place some blocks on it with glue, of course. Don't forget the glue. And this is for aesthetics. It can be anything you want. All right, so it can be like, they can be wide, they can, they can be tall, whatever you feel like. One important thing is that the train does need a train control, so I'm going to go ahead and put this here. And since this is facing forward, it's going to move the train in a forward direction when you press forward and a backward direction when you press backwards. I can also put one facing the other way and it'll inverse the controls. I like to put down seats so we don't fall off. We can put our seats on the other carts too. Now we have our train. and make the whole thing uh, actually into a train, we right click the train station and we click assemble train. There we go. Now our train is actually connected and you'll see they put some connectors between the carts. So I can just sit down here, right click the controls and I can move. So there you have it, that's how you make a train. One of the really cool features is that you can actually have trains go through portals. They can go into the nether. So here I've set up a little track. Let's go into the nether. Let's see what this looks like. All right, I'm in the nether now. And oh, I have to re-click the controls to be able to control it. So now I'm in this beautiful but dangerous realm on a train. That's pretty neat, I think. You can have trains go through portals, shorten the distance uh, between the source and the destination. I think this is a really cool feature that they've added. You know, I could see maybe you have a station in the nether that pumps up lava, then you load up a train and you go back to the overworld. That's definitely an application I could see. So now we're back in the overworld. I have to right click again to retake control and I can continue driving the train as if nothing happened. Cool, so that's how we go through portals on trains. Now the last feature. This is actually a few features. These are kind of complex, but I'll try to keep it simple. So right here we have a train with a pig on it. What is this pig doing on the train? Well, maybe we can, maybe we can make use of this pig. I have in my hand a train schedule, which basically has the stations I want it to stop at and how fast I want the uh, train to go. So I can actually give this schedule to the pig and he'll understand. So I'll just make sure my train is assembled. I'll give him the schedule and he'll get this little hat to, you know, to show you that he's the, the conductor. Let's just look at this guy. You know, he's going to stop at the station. He's going to continue and he's just going to drive along. Man, what a, what a good pig. So you can actually use this in your world. Let's say you want to have uh, trains running between your cities, between, uh, you know, metro stations within your town. You can do that with the train schedules and you can give this to any entity. It doesn't have to be a pig. It can be, it can be whatever you want. You give him the schedule and he'll just drive and do what you tell him to. It's a great feature. Okay, moving on to the next block. This is the train observer. So what this does is, well, it checks the train for items in the chest. So I have a chest here and this checks to see if it has any pork chops in it. When the train goes in front of it, it's gonna detect a pork chop and emit a redstone signal. So that's a good way of knowing what the train contains. Lastly, we have train signals. So these have quite a bit of complexity. Quite simply, they control the direction in which an automated train can run in. It's not gonna affect the player controlled train, only the automated trains. This allows the train to only move in one direction. But there's also something more important, which is the prevention of collisions. So since I have some stations, sorry, some signals set up, we'll see the train stopped. This one here with the pig stopped because I was on a train and I was in the way. So that's how you stop your trains from running into each other. If I just back up this train, the pig train will be able to continue.
So there you have it. This is Create 0.5 Full Steam Ahead. I hope you like it, and if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.